Professor Philip Robinson for the kind words. And also, I am grateful to all the participants uh, for uh, your uh, presence. Uh, friends, as uh, uh, you know rightly, uh, this is not simply we are taking some insights and ideas and uh, uh, putting into a text or a book to say this is there are ecological concerns in this book. But this course is the second part of our uh, eco uh, hermeneutical or eco theological course. Um, more or less, uh, we are uh, revising our uh, first uh, course curricula. And now we are taking up the books in detail and in a wider and deeper manner. Uh, so I'm so grateful to uh, the director and our, the staff uh, for uh, making uh, this uh, uh, thing, uh, this is possible because uh, uh, with this uh, we are able to meet people uh, in their own environment. And today's, uh, uh, my focus is a book of Hebrews. A book of Hebrews is uh, uh, a book with a lot of doctrinal and uh, theological concerns. Doctrinal and theological concerns, when I say, uh, this book uh, was written to address the real life issues of the people. So because we have uh, uh, a quiz program followed by my lecture, I would also highlight uh, some of the aspects uh, uh, that you are expecting uh, in, as far as this book is uh, concerned. But without uh, counting or studying book of Hebrews, you will not be able to understand the New Testament in a perfect manner, in a deeper manner. Uh, because there are a lot of discussions about uh, the authorship of book of, book of Hebrews, but no doubt about its originality. This was included the very first list of New Testament canon. The very first list of New Testament canon, when I say this was used by very first community, probably early 2nd century. And uh, the last part of 1st century and the early 2nd century. So this document was very much uh, uh, used by the early church. So that's the first thing you need to note. This canon uh, included book of Hebrews in its uh, clear framework with all its uh, uh, A to Z uh, theological arguments. Okay, second is the religio-cultural context of this book. I know that we are talking about uh, uh, environmental concerns, but to enter into the book, you, we need to go step by step. Religio-cultural context of this book, specifically I can say the context of conversion and faith. Conversion from Judaism to Christianity and some reconversion happened because of some of the early concerns uh, could not be digested by the Jewish Christians. The early concerns raised by the early Christians. So the context of religious culture, this book was conversion and uh, faith. So when we study this book, when we interpret this book, we should clearly understand this was a book, uh, a scripture, which was used by the early church right from the beginning. And this was part of the canon. No doubt about its originality. And the question is uh, raised to by many scholars about its connection with the Paul. See, as all of us know, Paul was uh, active in the 50s and 60s and he wrote uh, original letters and then the Pauline school continued. Timothy, Titus and others continued. Then uh, the book of Hebrews probably produced by a Jewish Christian who knew the early church very well. And there were many concerns raised by uh, the, 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 author, the, the author as well as the recipients. So the question is, who were the first readers? The first readers or the first recipients were Jewish Christians. Uh, that aspect 
kindly not and uh, clement uh, one of the uh, early teachers of the church uh, affirmed that this was uh, pauline authorship because so many pauline other uh, ideas are there covenant new israel and uh, the connection between uh, abraham abraham and other uh, revelation revelatory figures so there were questions raised to by uh, clement affirming its pauline authorship and you probably remember the first part of my presentation i said it was included in the canon uh, the, the first list of canon we have a proof uh, first clement referring to this book dated around the ad 90 so no doubt uh, from a new testament uh, point of view from a new testament scholarship point of view this was a book written for jewish christians addressing the issues of early church and incorporating the concerns of environmental uh, framework then what is the uh, genre of this book and the literature what kind of literature it is we can say it is a homily it is a homily word of homily uh, hebrews chapter 13 verse 22 uh, reads uh, and giving us a clear picture about uh, word of homily 13 22 let me read the first four verses of book of hebrews long ago at many times in many ways god spoke to our fathers by the prophets but in these last days he has spoken to us by his son whom he appointed the heir of all things through whom also he created the world he is the radiance of the glory of god and the exact imprint of his nature and he upholds the universe by the word of his power remember uh, uh, no, please note that he upholds the universe by the word of his power after making purification for sins he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs so this shows the depth of this book and we cannot simply read and go this book this book you need to study very well study in detail with the help of uh, new testament study tools the other reference also i read chapter 13 verse 22 giving us what is this book and what is the literary uh, framework of this book i appeal to you brothers bear with my word of exhortation that is homily for i have written to you briefly uh, this is the clear picture about this book and uh, the background of this book as well as the framework of this book now let us come to uh, the content of this uh, the study of ecological dimension of this book you uh, probably remember the last reading and uh, some of you have already read i understand last reading entitled earth as host or stranger reading hebrews 11 from diasporian experience written by alan h card valader alan h card valader and this is clearly talking about the environment in the first century environment where refugees migrants and all those people entered into a community and they call it uh, pilgrim through the ba barren land this is a kind of hegemonic pre uh, presumption uh, this kind of interpretation they say and there is a dualism we see heaven and earth that dualism is uh, called platonic dualism this is a platonic plato platonic dualism between heaven and earth the argument is very clear you commit any offense uh, to earth and its pilgrim that is sin remember that is the environmental message we need to take from book of hebrews you 
commit any offense to earth and we, the, the pilgrim that's a sin and then you need to seek forgiveness forgiveness by building the communities of faith in the context of disastrous ecological consequences today and uh, ethical immunities and ethical frameworks and the challenges today we need to talk about these uh, migrants and refugees with the passion and enthusiasm uh, because this book was written I, uh, as i told to the raw uh, jewish christians and jewish christians were probably the pilgrims to jerusalem and the pilgrims were travelers pilgrims were displaced to people pilgrims were migrants and pilgrims were with Uh, without land so such people were taken care of under the banner of covenant covenant established by god and uh, that is the message of book of hebrews as far as the environment and new uh, community new earth is concerned and uh, we can read this book from various angles many point of view one major point of view people take is the theological reading and take the theology of the book and then we go for a uh, basic aspect of this uh, uh, meaning but i would suggest not only theology we as bible study leaders pastors theologians we should also understand the names mentioned in this book names abraham names jacob israel and so many people who experienced to faith who struggled for faith who struggled to protect god's environment uh, their names are mentioned the tension between egyptians and uh, israelites and the exodus uh, journey and uh, uh, the issue of crucifixion and the people of galilee and palestine how they suffered and all those things are mentioned so i'm coming to the another aspect of understanding this book of hebrews the aspect of power and today very much we discussed the question of power everything uh, in the office of a teacher office of a principal office of a uh, bishop office of a presbyter office of a local body president all holding power people as you but the book of hebrews say what is important is the community the people with the covenant if you are power of salvation so environment you have the response and protect the pilgrims glorify the the this uh, way this uh, uh, article goes and this article uh, based on the environmental reading and the earth bible uh, this is talking about very basic issues raised by the book of hebrews and the third aspect is the book of hebrews clearly giving us a space to offer assistance see you are a human being you are a leader of a community and you think if you have the support of you, you can offer resistance no you can offer resistance only with if you have the theological support and the moral and ethical values projected by the kingdom of god that is the major argument of the book of hebrews and that is why the examples of abraham examples of other early fathers all suggested in the book of hebrews you are ready to be sacrificed then you have the moral power you have the theological power and you experienced a covenant then you will be able to protect the interest of the community so the resistance is not a human word resistance is a divinely anointed word i would say resistance according to the book of hebrews inspired by the holy spirit inspired by the spirit of the lord and only with the support inspiration from the uh, spirit then you will be able to motivate that kind of resistance this article also talks about uh, stranger in the old testament citing the example of ruth 
then coming to uh, the whole question of the identity of year identity of year host and god is ready to welcome us then uh, god is talking right. to us through earth through the living environment and we need to define and respect the basic define the living environment what is the failure that we commit today we uh, commit today we don't respect the living environment of our neighborhood we respect our living environment and uh, there are people i could see some senior pastors and teachers professors professors and uh, the, you know that the community building is not an easy task we need to understand the basics of the living environment of the people and the book of hebrews clearly giving us that picture there are many studies uh, citing this aspect that is uh, one by one uh, jewish scholar yadin o e d i n and his study says the living environment is a faith environment only with the help of that living environment and faith environment you will be able to move forward and understand the faith aspect of the uh, community and what is the message uh, reflected in the book of hebrews message is clear that you need to take care of you are earth because earth is always a site for the conversation of faith earth is a site for celebration of faith yet earth is a site for engagement of faith and we as faith community we need to engage ourselves in terms of that and coming to the last part of my uh, class there is a, an article is part of our reading uh, written by uh, lutisone salevo a samovian biblical scholar the title is burning the land an eco justice reading of hebrews and that article very passionately talking about the way land is taken away from samovian people land is taken away uh, from the uh, basics of samovian people because that was their livelihood that was their life environment but the land is taken away so in short uh, with that example we will understand the uh, all over the world across the globe there are communities similar to samovian people uh, talking about this type of understanding this is a pain this is a painful reality people are denied food people are denied their livelihood because land is uh, taken away from them and I, i i don't want to explain it in detail because that is all uh, part of your reading so in short uh, we try to see mainly three things one this book was a faith document written uh, to nurture the faith sustain the faith of uh, early jewish christians and they were the recipients and this was included in the very first list of canon and the question of power is discussed in connection with the covenant so the resistance is not a human word resistance is a spirit inspired movement so you need the support of the spirit spirit of the lord uh, to provide resistance and earth any offense to earth any offense to the inhabitants of earth is a sin so earth to be protected because earth is a site for uh, conversation celebration of faith and engagement and finally taking uh, take away the uh, earthly resources from local people native people uh, is seen across the globe and we need to address with the help of the insights from this book to protect the earth as well as uh, preserve the resources of the native people thank you we'll spend some time for question answers